How you doing guys, welcome to another video. Topic one, volume four, moral relationships. Again, make sure you got a calculator and data book for these videos. Volume four, moral relationships. We look at the mole relationships in molecules and we look at just calculating the amount of substance in moles. Students find this a little bit challenging. It's not really in the textbook, but it's something that we're going to go over. So the understandings is just that amount of moles of a substance. Text ref 14 to 20, check it out. So the chemical formula shows the mole relationship between the individual atoms that make up a molecule. And this come up in the last video a little bit. Methane gas is produced from the combination of one mole of carbon atoms and four moles of hydrogen atoms. That's because the formula for methane is CH4. So we need one mole of carbon plus four moles of hydrogen to make one mole of methane, one mole of CH4. So the ratio is one to four to form one mole of methane. Vinegar, known as ethanoic acid, is produced from the combination of two moles of carbon atoms, four moles of hydrogen atoms, and two moles of oxygen atoms. That's because the formula for vinegar is CH3COOH. So we need our two moles of carbon and our four moles of hydrogen and our two moles of oxygen to make the formula C2H4O2. But we usually write ethanoic acid as CH3COOH and that will come up in topic 10 organic chemistry later on in the semester. So some examples. Calculate the number of mole of oxygen in 0.5 mole of oxygen molecules. The number of moles of oxygen atoms in a sample of oxygen molecules. So the number of moles of oxygen will equal. Now, look at the formula. We have two oxygens in each molecule. So we have two times the number of moles of O2 because the formula has two oxygens in it. So it's two times 0.05, which has one significant figure. So my answer will be 0.1 mole. 0.1 mole of oxygen. For the second one, B. Calculate the number of moles of sulfate ions in a sample of lead sulfate. So we need to know the formula for lead sulfate. Pb2 plus SO4 2 minus gives us the symbol PbSO4. So in one PbSO4 molecule, we have one lead ion and one sulfate ion. So the number of moles of PbSO4 is equal to 2.3 times 10 to the minus three mole. And we need to just work out the number of mole of sulfate. So the number of moles of sulfate will be the same as the number of moles of PbSO4 because it's a one to one ratio. There's one lead and one sulfate. So the number of moles will be the same. For C, calculate the number of mole of phosphorus atoms in a precipitate, which has a really long name, determine the number of phosphorus atoms in the sample. Now with that formula, we have some magnesium, some ammonia, some phosphate, and then we have these six waters attached at the end. But that's not the important thing. The important thing is the phosphorus. What is the relationship between phosphorus and everything else? Well, in that molecule, there is only one phosphorus atom. So that means the number of moles of phosphorus will be the same as the number of moles of the precipitate, whatever that formula is. So we have one times the number of moles of that very long precipitate, which is going to be the same 0.01688. The little dot between the formula and the water just says that we have six waters attached to the molecule. 
Once we've found the number of moles of phosphorus, we can then use the formula from last episode to work out the number of phosphorus atoms by doing mole times Avogadro's number, which gives us 1.016 times 10 to the 23 atoms. I had four significant figures in my precipitate, so I can have four significant figures in my answer. Calculate the number of moles of stated particles in the following. Chloride ions in 0.0025 mole of aluminium chloride. So we've been given some information about aluminium chloride. The number of moles is 0.0025. We need to work out the number of moles of chloride. So again, we look at the formula. AlCl3 has three chlorides per molecule. So we have three times the number of moles of AlCl3, which is 0.0025. Three times that gives us 0.0075, the number of moles of chloride ions. If we were to, uh, to find the number of moles of carbon atoms in 1.4, 1 times 10 to the minus 4 moles of caffeine, then we need to see the chemical formula or the structural formula like it's been given on the right and we need to go through and count the number of carbons. So there are 10 carbons in the caffeine molecule. So we know the number of moles of caffeine is 1 times 10 to the minus 4 and because we have 10 carbons in every one molecule the number of carbon will be 10 times the number of moles of caffeine. So we have 10 times 1 times 10 to the minus 4, which is 1 times 10 to the minus 3 mole. One significant figure for that one. Determine the number of particles present in 0.091 mole of silver atoms. So this one's actually a little bit easier. We just need to use Avogadro's number, determine the number of particles, that is big N and we multiply that by the mole times by Avogadro's number, which is 0.091, multiplied by Avogadro's number 6.02 times 10 to the 23, which will give us our value. 5.5 times 10 to the 22, and our unit is atoms, because we're talking about silver atoms. So, volume four, top tips. Um, the formula expresses a relationship in moles between the atoms, and students generally find this hard at first. So don't worry if you're struggling. Make sure you ask your teacher when you return to school. Make sure that you're showing clear and detailed working. It's so important for all of this topic. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you next time.